Hi all, good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Sunday. All set? See you by 5 o'clock? Okay. So my name is Vijay. I am working as an Agile coach in a product development company in uh, Hyderabad. I have been into Agile since uh, 2009 and I am certified in CSM, CSP and CST and PMI, ACP, also PMD. So I am more into, I started my career in 1998 and uh, I have 18 years of experience, entire experience is into IT only. So I started as a core developer and I played all roles like uh, product owner, scrum master and uh, the development team member also. So we are going to talk about three topics today. One is product backlog and user stories and then definition of done. Probably it will take uh, one and a half hours to cover that. And uh, let's have a small working agreement. If you have questions, please ask then and there. And if it is outside the concept that we are talking about, I have the right of parking it in a side, but we'll be covering it before five o'clock today. And if it takes too long to explain, or if it is not interested to somebody here, maybe in my company I'm doing this, is this right or wrong? That also we will park aside, and definitely we will cover that before the class. Good? Okay, cool. So let me ask you a question. How many of you are from engineering background? Please raise your hands. Okay. What is backlog? <laughs> <laughs> and how many backlogs you have? Come on. Transparency is one of the less of empirical model. Openness, courage is one of the strong values, right? Okay, good. What is backlog? <laughs> is yet to be completed. Okay. Good. So when I add a word product to the backlog, what does it mean? Product backlog. Okay. Good. So he's saying for a product that you want to deliver, the items that are required to be part of the product. It's called product backlog, right? Then what will be the characteristic? First of all, who will create the product backlog? Who is he? He is one of the roles of the. So you must be knowing that he is responsible for return on investment, product vision, product success, right? So where is this product backlog coming from? From the vision, right? I want to deliver some innovative product, which may be calling it XYZ product. So that will drill down into backlog, which is for product backlog, right? Now, obviously, product owner owns the backlog, correct? Now, who can add items to the backlog? Okay, Scrum Master. Only Scrum team? What do you mean by anyone? Stakeholders. Good. He is saying any stakeholder of the project can add items to the backlog. Right? Yes or no? Good. Then, that means if I add an item as a stakeholder, I always want it to be on the top of the thing. Right or not? Who should make the decision? Product? Okay. Let's do one thing. We are planning to celebrate a wedding, which is a project for me. And it's a bride's wedding. That means who is the product owner here? Obviously, bride's father. Right? So take down flip charts or the notes, discuss for three minutes, come back with all the items that you want to have in the wedding backlog. Okay? You have three minutes time that starts now. Please discuss first and then put it in bed. So you are going to create a wedding backlog that contains all the items that you wish to be part of the backlog. 
development team will estimate. So there are multiple methods you can follow. One of those methods and very popular invented by Mike Cohn is story point estimate. If not, is that is using story point estimate, right? So which will give you the size of the items. Now, if you want to consider a product backlog that looks like this, if it is like a stack, right? So this is your product backlog. Now, items here on the top, items here on the bottom will have specific characteristics, right? From here, you will pick items into your This is planning, review, retrofit. So from here you pick up items to screens. Now when you want to pick up from the top, you obviously want them to be very detailed. Yes? Small enough. You have the acceptance criteria dated, all those things. So items here are more granular, small enough. Items here. Abstract. Very fantastic word. Very high level. I may see this item as this. I may see the item here as this. But when it goes above, above, above into the backlog in the prioritization, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller so that it will meet this criteria. Who will do that? Together, product owner and the pro development team in an activity called product backlog refinement. Right? So now, if I say, what is the first criteria to put something on the top? Oh, I have 10 items. No, we are talking about prioritizing concept itself. So if I want to give priority one for one item in my 10 items backlog, what is the criteria for that? Should we should <laughs> business? Business value, right? So high business value should be kept on the top. Why? There is one principle called first principle. Our highest priority is to satisfy the customer with early and continuous delivery of valuable software. So if you release something which is not interested to the customer, you do not put it on the top, put it on the bottom. If something is very interested to the customers, you see it generates a lot of revenue, then automatically it will be on the top. Agree? Good. So who will decide the value? Product owner. Obviously, we need to attach some size also, right? Yes. Who will decide the size? D. So, when you say that, development team does not play any role in the prior position? Yes. What kind of role? Development team understands the requirements and the expenses. Okay. But prioritization concept, just for the prioritization, what is the stake of the development team? Excellent. Technical dependency. For example, you have two stories. One is login, the other is registration. So the customer product owner comes to you and say that, I want to deliver the login first in the sprint, and log registration may be in the third sprint. So what is the impact? Without registration, you may have to do some kind of hard working, hard coding, or create the uh, user IDs in off the line. So many things, right? So that kind of dependencies and technical constraints you can discuss with the product owner. You can provide the alternative solutions, all those things for prioritization. So when we talk about two things, one is value, one is size. There are three possibilities. One is Two items have same value, same size. Fair enough? Two items have different value, different sizes. Few items, same size, different value. Yes or no? It's possible, right? When I say size, that comes with the volume of work involved. 
So the bigger volume work involved will be bigger size, smaller volume of work involved, smaller size. So when you say something, business value is $100, size is this, when we call say five points, we will know what is the point, five story points. Another story, $100, which will have three points. Which one should be picked? Three points. Why? Again, same thing, value. The business value is, and it can be delivered faster. Similarly, you may have same size, different, or same size, same value, all these things, you have to collaborate in your discussion. What is the Agile Manifesto first value? Individuals and interactions over processes and tools. You can happily have this sheet of product backlog in an Excel sheet and keep it hidden from anybody at this table I was looking at, right? So, a lot of collaboration is required. Yes, please. This is the criteria to give points. That we will discuss when we come to estimation. There basically, the concept talks about complexity, uncertainty, and risk involved. Okay. Now, when you have to choose items for prioritization, just remember VCR. High value, low cost, high risk items, you have to prioritize in the beginning of the project. Why? I'm sure you will be okay with value and cost. Why high risk items should be taken first? Why should you do that? Somebody use a word. Impact. What impact? Failures. For example, take the case of payment gateway integration. You are working on an e-commerce project. One of the requirements will be integrate to the PayPass. So team thinks that it is very technically new stuff, we don't know that, a lot of complexity involved. And so we will do it at the end. So you built all the website, you have everything is ready. Now when it comes to integration of PayPal, team identified that it is not possible to integrate because of the technical architecture that I have chosen for the project. So what is the impact? All the money is wasted, product success rate is deteriorated. So, either fail fast, fail early, that is agile concept, right? So if something does not work, maybe you may change it. That is why agile software development is a guided missile. Yes? Good. So value, cost, and risk. Now, is it a static document or a living document? What is the life of the product backup? Until the product development completes. Yes, sir. Yes. Good. Any questions? Hmm? No question? Estimated a story size as, for example, this much size, 100 points. Right? When you split it into multiple things, I will be covering how to split small things like this, which may be above little 100 or below 100. So, by looking at them, some things using principle number 10, you can say this is not required. Right? Again, collaboration. Fantastic question. Any other questions? If you don't have questions, I have some questions for you. Shall we? Good. I read out this. You have to say true or false. Product backlog contains functional, non-functional, infrastructural defects and architectural items. Yes, yes, yes. True? So the concept you need to learn here is what kind of items I'm stealing a concept from mother. P, P, F. You know public provenance front, right? <laughs> so, first P is past sins. What are they? Defects. Defects, because 
the story that you have implemented in sprint 1 may get a defect in sprint 3. So obviously that should be given little more priority. Then present needs. Future enhancements may be related to infrastructural enhancements or technical architectural designs related things. Right? So these are the items. Good. So next one is each product backlog item has a description, value, estimation, and order associated with it. Yes or no? If somebody true. Good. Higher order product backlog items are usually clear and more detailed than lower order backlog items. Very good. The product backlog is sorted from small items at the top always to large items at the bottom. False? False. Somebody say false and somebody say true. False. False? false. Good. Anyone can create backlog items, but product owner has overall responsibility to manage the items. Yes. Very good. Development team may work on critical engineering items without placing them in product backlog. Or anything and everything that the development team is working for the product should be in the product backlog. That is the single living artifact. One of the most important artifacts of the Scrum development is a product backlog. Next one, the development team is responsible for estimating the backlog items. Yes. Very good. A single development team works from multiple product backlog. False. False. Then if I say multiple teams can work on same backlog. Yes. Yes. Very good. The last one here, before we close product backlog, the product owner keeps the product backlog somewhere secretly so that no one can touch it. Transparent, right? Good. If you don't have any questions on product backlog, we can go to next topic called user stories. Please. Regarding the story point, the size of the ASP or size is who is going to decide? Development team. Development team estimates with the collaboration using the concept called planning poker. It is not the only estimation technique. You can use any other technique also, but story point is widely used estimation technique. There is one question. In product backlog, we will be having the We will cover in this. Use the story. Okay. Very simple. You have the backlog, right? Assume that this is your backlog. This is your backlog. Items will move from here to here, here to here, and they get more clarity when they, they are split into multiple things, right? So items from here, what happens is you can mark them as, this is my product backlog. There is a release backlog also. Some of these items may be targeted for release one, some items for release two, some items for release three like that. Then each release, what is the release? It's a combination of multiple sprints. So my release one may have five sprints. One, two, three, four, five. Sprint one, sprint two, sprint three, sprint four, sprint five. Each sprint has this structure. It starts with the time box. What is the sprint? It is a time box duration in which the development team picks up the I value items from the backlog, product backlog, and convert them into working software. So items from this backlog belong to this release, this sprint will be implemented using in the planning part, they discuss it, they estimate it, and the execution, they do analysis, design, development, testing, all these things. In the review, they demonstrate to the product owner. They get sign off or not, and then in the retrospective, they do how we can inspect and adapt. How can we become more better and better sprint by sprint? Okay. Yes. You can consider this is the superset, release backlog is the subset, and the sprint backlog is the small subset. No, what we do is generally if you are using a tool called version one or anyone, 
there will be fields, release 1, 2, 3, 4, string 1, 2, 3, 4. So when you map the items to releases and string, you can see by filtering the release 1, all the items. There should be some way, uh, I, I don't say it is tool dependent. So for a particular release, what are all the items that you are targeting, it should be visible to all. Maybe you can write it on a post-it and stick it somewhere, these are the release items. Items come and items go. For that release, your backlog is there. But it is the subset of your overall backlog. Ideally, it should be one backlog mapped with different fields in the tool that you are going to use. Even Excel also works better for that. That one. Yes, the reason is it is very difficult to co communicate and also balance the dependencies, right? If it is one backlog, moving here to here, here to here is fine. And this is order list. There may be one item with order three, one item with order three there. So it will create a lot of confusion. That is a one team works against one backlog. Multiple teams can work on single backlog, that is the scale model that we discuss in subsequent Good question. Are we creating the tasks in backlog? No. Backlog contains only the functional, non-functional, all those things. But when you have the sprint backlog, right, this will be containing the tasks for each story. Because when you start writing all the tasks of your backlog, you wouldn't know which item will be skipped, which item will be implemented. So it is a waste of time. Again, principle number 10. Whatever you are doing, just to compare it with the 12 principles and 4 values, whatever it does not make sense, don't do it. Right? Yes, please. Product backlog, you know, um, let's One story can have multiple tasks that will cover the development cycle. Suppose login is one story. If you pick up into a sprint, during the sprint planning part two, which we'll discuss more in detail, the team will come up with, I need to analyze, which may take one and a half hours. I need to do some UI. I need to do some backend store procedure. I need to do some testing. I need to do some bug fixing. All these things together individually will take some effort. I have a problem. But, but can we do this up in that topic? Because we have a separate topic in sprint planning which will be covered in more detail. One last. Yes, sir. So you have to keep the product backlog into tasks. <coughs> no. Each, see, see, you have a sprint backlog that might contain the five stories or six stories or whatever it may be. Each story will have subsequent tasks associated with that. So when you pick up the story, Team will work on those tasks. When all the tasks are complete, the story is considered to be complete. And the definition of time is done. You said one person. <laughs> Everything that you do is part of the sprint and scrum, except the initial architectural things at all. Because you said some something is not clear, right? So there is one concept called definition of ready. We use the definition of ready and items meeting the definition of ready will only be picked up in the sprint, first thing. Second thing, your product owner is sitting next to you. Customer collaboration or contract negotiation. A lot of the times when I was teaching, uh, coaching the teams, there are no if statements. What code block should be written in the if? And maybe a couple of else's. Then when they get into else, 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 they don't know. So immediately they can ask the product owner, okay, what is happening here? How should we go about? What the action should be? So that they can discuss and they can proceed. So I want to add something here. Yeah. So when we talk about uh, when to do it, because Vijay mentioned the PPF concept, right? Past, present, and future. 
like in your backlog, your sprint also will have time established where you are discussing these items, right? So in your sprint, while you're developing new things, you're also thinking about which stories are next, elaborating them, detailing them out, and so on. So that PPF also applies to the sprint duration, right? So you will take out time every sprint to think about what, what is coming next, what design details we put in, what UI we put in, and all those kind of things. That's what is backlog refinement. The reason I thought this was because Let me answer. Did you find the use in that? Yes, because we discussed everything in there, estimate all that, we know we need to work on it, and then we generate it. You are renaming the product backlog refinement as a discovery in that case. We, in Scrum terminology, we call it as product backlog refinement, where sometimes you split the stories, larger stories into smaller stories, estimate them, discuss some of the higher architectural issues, and all these things. So if you call it as a discovery, please rename it to product backlog refinement. That is that solves the problem. Some what do you say about splitting or splitting? What are we doing in sprint? No, no, sorry, any product. You mean is a review? Okay. When you want to bring any old product backlog to the sprint. Yes. Again, same thing, product backlog refinement, similar. And there's a gate, entry gate and exit gate. Your entry gate to the sprint is definition of ready. Whether the item is meeting the definition of ready, you can create your own structure or criteria for this. For example, story should be small enough, feasible in one sprint, has the acceptance criteria, testable, all these things. When it is not meeting, you say no, we cannot take. Why? You may not be. Delivering that, isn't it? So at the end of the sprint, what should be coming out as the output? Potentially shippable product increment. So if you are not clear, obviously taking that into a sprint is a waste of time and waste of money, right? Good. Any other questions? Yes. So uh, in the the first one is uh, as the past scenes, past scenes, right? The bugs are written in terms of story. No, that we'll discuss in the current topic. I'm going to cover that. Okay. Now, one last question for you. Yes. Yeah. Is the product backlog refinement a part of the sprint or? It is part of the sprint, but it is not as part of the core ceremonies. Like we have planning, yeah. daily standard, review, retrospective. So this is called an activity. Product backlog refinement is an activity. You can do it anytime in between the sprint, or you can do it multiple times, spending some half an hour, one hour time. Anything is fine. So last question for you. How many stories the team can pick up in a sprint? Depends. Depends on the size of the story. So sometimes, that is why, if you want to track your progress based on the number of stories picked up, it will be fluctuating. So in that case, you use a concept called velocity. You may have picked up a 13 point story and an 8 point story which is 21. Or 3 point story is 5. Or 6. Or 8. Right? Good. So let's move on to the concept called user stories. What is a story? We all come from the background where we grandmothers tell us before bedtime. They tell us a story, right? Once upon a time there was a king, he had seven sons, he went for hunting, right? Okay, what is that? We are talking about when we say story, we know that something interesting. <coughs> then when I add this word user, it will become user story. What is that? It's a representation of a requirement of a product that you are going to develop in terms of the end user experience. Who's the end user? Anybody, some people, backend team, and some, if you take a bank system, bank management system, right? You have bank automation. So, for example, ICICI, Internet Banking. <coughs> Who are users here? 
call them as persona. There is a word called persona. P E R S O N A. This concept, please make a note. User story <coughs> is not a scrum technology. Ron Jeffries has invented this user story. It is more from the XP point of view, extreme programming, which is another framework that is built on agile framework, agile principles and values, right? So olden days when team was working on XP mode, what they used to do is they used to write the requirement in a small post-it and they discuss with the product owner and the development team discuss and the identify the acceptance criteria, all these things. When the development team picks up for the sprint implementation, product owner hands over this to the development team. So considering that they develop it in the review stage, they give the same thing to the product owner, which has already written with the acceptance criteria. He will test it. They say, okay, yes, I'm accepting it, right? So that is the user story. So what is this persona? The different fictitious characteristics that are interacting with your system to do some kind of job. Who are different personas in internet banking system? Okay, normal customer means you, they can be NRA, savings, NRA current, and uh, senior citizens, or uh, children, or admin staff, or who are branch manager, all these are personas, right? So, when you write a requirement in terms of user story, that should follow a structure. The structure is, as a persona or user of the system, I want to some action so that benefit or value. Now, if you understand this structure in a little bit detailed manner, what is this representing? Who? Who is this user want this requirement? This one? What? What is that he, is, he or she is trying to do? This one? Why? Why does he want to do that? Right? Now, if I miss this in writing the user stories, what is the problem? Hmm? Can you please give him a round of applause? What is the fundamental characteristic for the prioritization is business value. So if you do not mention that in this statement, nobody can understand why something should be prioritized. Right? Now, should you follow the same thing for all the kinds of backlog items? Not necessary. If you want to fix a defect, as a developer, I want to fix this logging defect so that not required. Infrastructure issue, technical issue, only the functional related items you have to represent in this manner, right? Now when we talk about persona, there is a concept called extreme persona also. What is extreme persona? People with some special needs. Like for example, if you are building a railway platform, who are extreme personas? <coughs> Physically challenged, if you do not consider those extreme persona related items, your product may not be used by all. That means the horizontal growth will not be there. So while you are writing the stories, you have to understand who can be the extreme personas and writing. Okay, so before jumping into that, can we write some stories? Okay, so the product that we are going to build is a magic watch. It's my dream since 10 years. I've been still working on that, studying. So, my product name is Magic Watch. So, it should cater, my personas will be senior executives, housewife, students, trainers, 
these four we will take. Right? The structure we discussed is as a persona, something here. I want to some action so that some value. Please note the value is not always tangible. It's intangible sometimes. Agree or not? Very nice. So I give you an example. As a trainer, I want to use my watch as a projector so that I don't need to carry out a separate projector. As a trainer, I want to use my watch as a storage device so that I don't need to carry a flash drive. Right? You please take two minutes, each table, talk more, write less. You understand, I hope. So discuss more, whatever makes sense, and you write down. Two minutes, each table, maybe five, five stories. The time starts now. You can take any of these or all of this. Very fine. 
fantastic users to have, right? Very good. Yes. Anybody else? Yes, yeah, as a, so as a senior educator, I want to have a schedule displayed so that I can plan the day. And uh, I want to scan the business cards so that I can have them on a contact list. See, very, very innovative. Excellent the, story. And the main other one is this as a student, I want to record the lectures so that I can use it while studying and I can do it. Absolutely, wow. good story. See, anybody? They have one more thing to read it. That's it. Yeah, as a housewife, I want to know uh, where are my kids. That's good. He did not say that. As a housewife, I want to track my husband where are my kids. We are very glad for that. They can't see the watch, right? So if they if they uh, can tap the watch, we should speak all the time. Very good. Fantastic. Good. Uh, I want to record all my classroom sessions so that I can uh, play out. Yes. Yes. Okay. Stop here. See, some things you need to remember is please do not duplicate when you're writing stories into the backlog. Right? So you have to always eliminate the duplicate stories. Right? Now there is a concept we need to understand here is epic and a story. What is an epic? Epic means not Ramayana Mahabharata. In, in Scrum language or Agile language. What is epic? Epic is a large user story. Yes, large size where you want to split into multiple things. Because it is, it does not fit in a particular sprint, right? Okay. So how to sprint? We will cover in the next step. But each user story should satisfy three C characteristics. C first C is for thought. Second C is for conversation. Third C is for confirmation. So that means. Whenever you have a requirement, it should be first written on the card, which is high level. You see the post-its, right? Why they are not A4 size? Can somebody tell me? Why don't we have A4 size post-its? It should be precise to the point, right? I used to coach one thing in uh, some company. So product owner has taken a board document. He has created a complete specification and took a post-it. Story number one, page number three, section 3.1 to section 5.5. Story number two, section 5.7 to section 7.5. How agile is that? So to be more precise, concise, small, that should lead to the conversation. This should not give the entire details of the story. Conversation between <coughs> development team and product owner, or product owner and stakeholders, whoever it may be, players of the, the product development. That should drive to identify the confirmation, that means the acceptance criteria. What is the criteria that you tell me? to accept the story when it is converted as a working software at the end of the sprint. So he tells you, if you satisfy all these five conditions, then I accept the story. Right? So that is 3C concept. When a story should be considered as a good user story, it should satisfy this invest principle. I is for independent. What does it mean? No dependencies on other stories, very good, but why? Why should we have it? If some story is dependent on, says for example, login and registration. Login is just two fields, your name, password. Registration, say, it is say 40 fields. So until unless you complete the registration, you cannot move the login. So now is it possible? Is it possible to have all independent user stories? No, but by splitting the stories, large stories, dependent stories into smaller 
you will reduce the dependency. If you cannot eliminate the complete dependency, you will reduce to the maximum extent so that you can group them and deliver in a particular spread. Now negotiable, what is negotiable with respect to the scope? Discuss more and identify what is really required for using this negotiable. That means if it is really vague, very very high level, you can't start a discussion, that is not a good user story. Valuable, of course, that should have business value in terms of tangible or intangible, right? For example, if I'm a chef of a South Indian restaurant, I may write a story. I want to add, as a chef, I want to add Bengali sweet to South Indian Bali so that I get 10 customers extra per day, right? I know that if I add this, I get to the menu, I get 10 customers extra. So valuable, estimable, that means the team should be able to estimate the size. That means it should not have a lot of ambiguity, it should have little more details. Sized appropriately, right? The story should be sized, not just like 40 point story and one point story, <coughs> not like that. It should have a particular range. And then testable means you should have acceptance criteria attached to the story so that once the development team completes the development of the story, they will know, yes, I can test using this criteria. Why should we have it? If this is missing, if T part is missing in invest principle, what could go wrong? Non-working software, rework, right? We hate rework. No customer will want to pay for rework, right? So each of these invest principles has its own value to make your story as a good user story, right? Now come back to the epic and how to split user stories. So we discussed in the product backlog, the items that are in the bottom of the backlog are generally large size, correct? Okay. So you want to split that. Say this is 100 point story. You want to split it into multiple smaller things. Before that I want to understand you have visited a supermarket and you took a Colgate paste and you have given him 500 rupees check. That guy told you, I'm sorry it is very big. So you said, okay, no problem, I will tear it and give it to one piece because it will be smaller. Do you agree? Why? Not? Value is lost. So, let me take one more example. You attended a birthday party of your colleague's son. There's a cake which has layers. This is cream layer, this is chocolate layer, this is some XYZ layer and some this. So when the cake comes to you, you said, okay, give me the chocolate layer first. I will eat it. Is it good? How will you eat the cake? Why? You get the taste. Same concept, value, right? So same thing, when you are splitting a large story into multiple smaller stories, do not horizontally split, that means Take an example, registration, which has 45 fields. Now the development team says, no, no, it takes long time. It cannot be done in one sprint. So we will split. Then product owner or one of the team members joined recently, comes back. Okay, first sprint, we deliver all the user interface related requirements of this registration. In the second sprint, we build the business logic. Third sprint, we build the database layer. Is it good? Which is nothing but this concept, horizontal splitting. Where is the value delivered? Once you complete all these integrated user interface, business value and the database, and then only. So what is the best way to split? Five fields. 
we may identify out of this 45 tell me what are the three or four fields which are very very important for the delivery okay because registration is dependent on login so customer or product owner can say that login first name last name password these are the four things so out of this 45 this epic registration i may write as an unregistered user i want to register using first name last name these things so that i can become registered user first print gone your login and all can go the second string he may come up with another story as a registered user i want to update my billing address another four to five fields i want to update my hobbies another four to five fields this way we are vertically splitting which will go through all the phases of software development starting from analysis till testing and then review will be done by product owner and hand over to the product owner in the review right so there are multiple splitting concepts you can consider one is input output as a mobile user you can write one story as a web user or simple to complex if it is really complex first identify what are the simplest things you, you can do it then increase the complexity going forward right and uh, curd or uh, crud crud create read update delete right but whenever you are doing split please ensure the 3c concept and invest principle is met now to answer your question aparna suppose this registration is 100 story point then it will into smaller it may become 5 point another may become 2 point another may become 3 point 8 point like that the sum of this may become 100 or little more or little less but when you are doing the collaboration some things can you can ignore right there is a concept called sub epic also what is sub epic suppose i want to sort by something so sort itself is used then you will consider that like this <coughs> user management is my epic add delete sort this sort is little bigger so i want to add something like sort by first name sort by last name sort by email id mobile number so all these are smaller smaller user stories something if you don't want i don't want this i don't want this so your size will be reduced when it 100 when you split it will become smaller smaller so when you accumulate it may become 100 or little less little more but again individuals and interactions over processes and tools <laughs> yeah size of the story with respect to the volume of the work in one Of course. Yes. I thought it's the story. The last bottom of the backlog items are very large. We don't call it as epic. It is also a story, but big user story. The naming convention is epic. Okay, when we split it into number of user stories, like epic is hundred and we have to split it. The sum of these sub user stories should match up. Not that's what I'm saying. Not really. Because some things you may ignore. That is the simplicity, the map. Part of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. How valuable it is. Set to a first name. We are not really well. So we remove it. Collaboration only. Through collaboration, you have to. There is no something like balancing. You don't need to really do that. The important is whether we are achieving the scope of this or not by doing this. Exactly, that we will cover in the story. So, we cover all the story point and estimation business shortly, so you have to hold on to all those estimation yes. questions. Okay. No, yes, no. I know. We are happy to I'm, answer. <laughs> I'm reading for the bombardment, I know that. <laughs> Is there a? No. But it depends on what is the velocity of the team or what is the capacity of the team, depending on that. That also you will have the Any more questions? Of course. Epic is also a user story, but it's a big user story. The naming convention we call it as a epic. Again, it's not scrum part. But can we assign that epic You can assign, but what happens? You may not end up completing that. So that is why we are 
what is principle number one? Our highest priority is to satisfy customer with daily and continuous delivery. If you cannot deliver in the, at the end of the sprint as a working software, it is useless. That is why we are taking smaller things. So, very simple. You put a lot of items and a lot of price in the plate, right? How much you can eat? Same thing here. Clear? No questions? Please. There's nothing mandatory. It is up to you to decide the ID and the rank. ID can be treated as rank and the description and uh, any acceptance to criteria. Like, can repeat the question? The, the question is, are there any mandatory fields for a particular product backlog? So the fields that you can consider with the product backlog is ID and the rank, that means the sort order and the description. Any dependency, upward dependency, upstream dependency, downstream dependency, any acceptance criteria, which release it belongs to, which sprint it belongs to, and estimate the story size. I guess uh, work later on, uh, in uh, later stage, if any work project is not equal to this, that will be added to the back of the game. If you want to give the story reference, you can refer that to the partition. Okay? Clear? Sorry? Again, we have to park it aside. We will do that. What is the product backlog? Sprint backlog is a small subset of the product backlog which you will take and complete in a particular sprint. Suppose 100 items are there in the product backlog. In my sprint, I am taking top 3. The 3 will be part of the sprint backlog which contains the tasks also for each story. There will be certain order for a sprint, right? When we are doing the story. Order for? When we are developing the story, the development team will be included. So, all of a sudden, is there a chance that the order will be changed? Nice question, ladies and gentlemen. Is there any possibility of changing the order of the story in a sprint? Yes. yes. What is principle number two? Welcome changing requirements even late in the software development. Agile processes also help on the customer competitive advantage. Right? Again, it needs collaboration. How important it is to change the order or something, right? Generally, we don't allow new things to come in. Well, Sprint backlog contains the items that the team is picking up to complete as a working software in the particular sprint. It can be defects, it can be other stories, it can be some enhancements related to technical architecture, anything. Last question. Yeah, including the tasks or not. Details for is your story only. Yes. Sprint backlog is <coughs> Oh, another important question. Sprint backlog means not from previous question. Let me draw it and show it to you. See, for example, if you consider this is your backlog, right? These are all the items and these are your sprints, right? Yes? Sprint 1, sprint 2, sprint 3. Now you took 5 items to particular sprint. Out of these 5, one is not done. What happens? It may either go back to the backlog if that is our priority is not really important, or it might move to the next sprint backlog. That means the sprint number will be changed to the next sprint, which is really important. Who for that? Product. It's a collaboration again. Suppose team says 90% is done, just 10% is pending. Only 10% done, 90% is pending. So depending upon the situation where you are. The team, development team and the product owner together make the decision. Customer collaboration or contract negotiation. That we will discuss in the sprint planning. There are multiple ways, but we will tell the best ways. <coughs> yes? Every sprint will have its own sprint backlog. But we don't decide for the future. 
We decide on sprint planning day, what we'll take up in the sprint. Yes. Oh, that we will discuss in the next topic, the immediate next topic. Can we move on? <laughs> Sorry, no, absolutely. User story is different from task. When I say task, it is technical task like analysis, design, development, testing, coding, code review, all these things. User story is related to functionality, tasks are related to the technology. So, on uh, every sprint, there are a couple of defects. We'll be estimating some particular hours. So, if there are more defects in the sprint, that may change the estimates. So, how are we going to Very good. Again, I need to park it unfortunately for the estimation. Estimation, everything is estimation we need to park. Yes, please park it. We need to meet the 5 o'clock deadline. Back to our user stories, technical stuff, knowledge sharing related, defects, all the anything that you want to do. For the product development, is part or should be the part of the product development. Yes. Please. Jamie Islam does not allow changing the sprint backlog once the sprint begins. At times it is okay. If you if you make it habituated, the product owner at the day three, day seven, you can okay, remove it, add it. So again, this will break the principle of balance. Right? So collaboration again. <laughs> Good. Sprint cancellation is again another topic that we discuss. Post plan. We're trying to eat so many pizza pieces. Yes, please. See, I'm a good astrologer. <laughs> okay, this is a very good question. The traditional waterfall has 10%, 50%, 100% like that. Here, you have either 0% or 100%. Because, what is principle number one? Valuable software. I'm done with the development, only testing pending. Is it valuable? That's it. But our aim is to complete all the stories that we have picked up into the sprint as a working software that meets the definition of that. That is how we have to collaborate together. That needs mindset change. That means the sprint 90% is completed, that means not that. 90% done for one story I am talking about, not all stories. 90% of one particular story I am referring here. Remaining all are done. No, no. One backlog only. One sprint, one backlog only. If that is not done in that, either it will go to the product backlog or go to the next sprint backlog, depending upon the price. Let me ask you a question. You are you are starting working in a sprint model, scrum framework. Now, your sprint is 10 days. Now, your team suggests that first three days we will analyze all the stories. Next two days we design all the stories. Next two days, two to three days we develop. And the last two days we test all the stories. Is it a good scrum? No. Why? You are ha, you are doing waterfall. Right? Ideally, you should pick up one or two stories from the order of priority. You do analysis, design, develop, and complete them in one or two days or two to three days, then pick up the next story, next story. Then you will get more clarity in terms of what is the principle number seven says, which is a related to metrics. Working software is a primary measure of progress. That's it. Nothing else. Right? Cool. So last topic, the definition of done. Right? Definition of done. What is done? Can I write the marker? This write the marker? Yeah, it's okay. After. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean by done? There is nothing pending. 
completed. Then what is definition of term? Definition means the criteria. So the definition of done is a criteria that decides whether a particular user story can be considered as done or not. Who will decide this definition? Product owner? It's, it's a collaborative effort between the product owner and the development team. Right? What happens if a story does not meet the definition of done? It is not ready for the review. Right? Now, tell me what can be part of the definition of done? There's a, again, small thing. Confirmation criteria is equal to acceptance criteria plus done criteria. AC plus DC is equal to CC. We have done geometry, right? More geometry now. Right? What is AC? Acceptance criteria. Who is giving that? Product owner. At the time of discussing the story. Done criteria. Who is giving that? The development team. That means we should done with the development. We should complete the testing. There should not be any priority on zeros or severity one of defects. And code review should be done. At least half of the part of the code should be automated. Like that they define. Together, form confirmation criteria. Now, there are multiple ways to use it. The way I, I generally found useful is, say for example, story 1, story 2, story 3, story 4. Now you have, this is the criteria. Say, uh, unit testing complete, zero defects, and uh, code review should be done. Automation should be done and um, something like this. Say regression should be done and stress testing should be done like this. Right. Now, what are these S1, S2, S3, S4 stories? Now, S1 may be a new feature, S2 may be a defect, S3 may be a defect, S4 may be a new feature. Agree? Now, defect may not need a code review. The team can I agree. So what you can do is code review for defects, it is not mandatory, so optional. Remaining all are required. So you put it like this. Now what happens? When are you doing this? At what stage of your sprint you are doing this? Sprint planning. Because you know these stories at the end of sprint planning only, right? So together along with the product order and the development team makes this chart and they put it to the wall where the development is happening. So first you may pick up this story because it is the highest priority story with respect to the business value. So once the development team spends two to three days, they say that in the daily scrum, okay, good news, we completed the story. So somebody like scrum master, okay, did you do this, did you do this, did you do this, yes. Then you can say done. This is first done. Similarly, you do all these things. So the advantage is, if you do like this, you still have seven days to fix anything that is missing in this story. Isn't it? Stop starting, start finishing. If something is pending with this, moving on to the next story does not make any sense. So start, stop starting new things, stop finishing, start finishing the existing pending things. So like that you complete this. Once you are done with all the stories, when you present the stories to the review in the product owner, to the product owner, he will say, yes, I am accepting that. That is the second done. So done, done criteria. Right? So now it... Okay. Thing is, our objective is to ensure that all these stories are completed at the end of the sprint. Now the team can say, I will start all these things at once. Continue, continue, continue or I'll take one or two, or I, I'm starting with these two, but I got some impediments, so I cannot start, so I can collaborate again. So self-organization, nobody like the project manager will come and, okay, you got stuck here, so you pick up that. No, you make the decisions. There's a principle number, 11, right? What does it say? The best design architecture side, what? 
requirements and much from self organizing teams so you are self organized here clear so definition of that now when i say is it a static or dynamic definition of done is it static or dynamic that means my first sprint i have completed sprint planning i created this can i use it for the 10th sprint no 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 why it might change the team might have so much learning right so if you go to the scrum guide for especially for definition of done the more experience you gain the more time spent you in the scrum development the more wider your definition of done because quality is important so this completely drives to the quality that means it is a quality gate your definition of done as i said if you consider your sprint like this the entry criteria is your definition of ready the exit criteria is your definition of done that means dor will help you to choose whatever is meeting the criteria of definition of done that only will come to the sprint and dod will help you to whatever is approved and meeting the definition of done are only going to the production because after all we are trying to get potentially shippable product increment at the end of every sprint right now couple of things we need to discuss strong definition of done weak definition of done what does it mean what is a weak definition of done suppose i have defined so many criteria but i say okay regression we don't do it we will do before going to release stress testing we don't do it we will do more automation we don't do it so so much thing you are keeping aside and planning to do just before going to release that might impact your release because the time may not be sufficient right so you have to decide what needs to be done to make potentially shippable product increment and that should be part of your definition of done and you must try to achieve that as a self organized task functional team right you may start with the weak definition of done but as and when you get experience and the you saw some failures you make it stronger stronger and stronger right quality is one of the very very important factors quality is not an add on to the product that you are going to develop quality is an intrinsic characteristic of the development product you cannot append quality to this at the end of the development term while analyzing while designing while testing development you have to take care of the quality for any product right any questions yes Okay. The question is regression testing. We feel we cannot do it, or we don't need to do it. Can we move it to the end? So initially I plan for that, but within this ten days another will come later. Okay. When do you want to do that? Last. Okay. Okay. What would be the potential problem because of that? Moving to the end. That means just before the sprint of the release. Yes. I'm not able to do that. Ah. <coughs> So you are not able to complete. You want to go to production. Yes. Is it acceptable? <coughs> Something which they wanted to do it, but because of time deficit, they did not do it. They want to go to production. So go back and see which principles will impact. First principle will be impacted. Right? Because you are putting some defective features into the production. You may be more doing a fire fighting. It is a weak definition of done. So when you know something is not happening, you have to add it to the strong definition of done. Right? One more important thing is regression is a repetitive thing, right? So as and when you are, you have to execute something which is duplicate. Please try to automate it. So keep some time reserved to make things automated. So you can make the regression also part of the sprint. So there are multiple things that a development team can do it that just needs collaboration and mindset change. 
right? Yes, please. First day. Why? It depends on the length of the sprint. Again, unfortunately, we need to keep it for the sprint planning ceremony. If your sprint is 30 days, 8 hours is the sprint planning time. So that means pretty much first day you will spend on analyzing, understanding, estimating all these things and uh, breaking down into tasks. From day 2 onwards, your development and all will start. Any more questions before we wrap up? Question is, sometimes we cannot put it into production. So, and regression and all, we don't want to do it in the sprints, right? Scrum expects you to deliver potentially shippable product increment at the end of every sprint. If that needs a regression to be done, you have to plan for it. Now, the, the, there is a concept of continuous integration, continuous delivery. These are the DevOps concepts coming into. So, that will help you to meet those expectations. Ah, if your release is 3 months, correct, if you can do it, then you have to keep some, no, no, keep some amount of time for these un unmet definition of them, like regression testing, stress testing and all. Some teams call hardening sprint. Some teams call it the last sprint is hardening sprint where we don't develop any new features. But Scrum expects you to deliver potentially shippable increment every sprint of the sprint. So it is up to you to handle whether every sprint I do some automation and complete the regression or last sprint I do it, up to you. But it is not a good way of doing it. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely right. I want to add something to that. So good, good that you raised this point. See, when we and how many of our testers here have been into testing part and so on. I think what she has raised is a very important point because currently, when we talk about regression and integration, with all due respect to us, because I'm also a tester, we are so used to donkey testing, right? Take all the regression suit and simply start running. But we need to move to what I call as a smart testing. These are the five stories. This is the impact that we are going to have on that. So these are only on that impacted area. So impacted area analysis and critical path analysis. That is something very important as a skill for the customers to learn. And that also means I have to sit with the developers to understand what the code is doing. Not simply looking at a black box and say, oh, now I'm the functional tester. I cannot go into the code. And that also means I need to learn the language a bit so that I can understand what I've been put there. So when we talk about regression, when we talk about integration testing, the strategy needs to be changed. So testers are no longer the last bogey in the train. They have to work with the product owner, work with why they are developing this definition of done that video has been talking about, that what do we really put in the definition of done? That's something which is very, very important. So good, thanks for raising that point. Okay, a uh, couple of questions for you. If product owner comes and say that, okay, code review is not required because it is taking some effort, remove that. Will he accept? Why? He might not know the in consequence of that. So again, <coughs> collaboration is important. If you don't do the code review, you may end up finding defects in the production. Again, you have to spend time on that. Right? So you need to balance between what is required and what is not required. And accordingly, you have to adjust. Initially, your definition of done may be 
very fluctuating. So going forward, it will become stable and you have <coughs> very wider area of covering the done criteria in your definition of that. What do you want to do with the effectiveness? What is that you are trying to do? Right? So if you see zero defects in the production, that I don't need to see whether 90% effective or 70% effective, right? As long as I am not seeing any defects for the story that we are delivering, all my definition of unfriendly is working, not just code review. Maybe unit testing, automation, all these things are working fine together. What do you want to do with the metrics? I can measure the team effectiveness. Team, team themselves can measure their effectiveness in the inspect and adapt retrospective. Good question. Right? Why do you want as a who are you? First of all, who are you to measure the effective? I'm, I'm, don't take the wrong. Are you a manager? Are you a CEO? Oh, there is a principle number five, we are all forgetting that. Build projects around motivated individuals and give them the environment that they work and trust them to deliver the job done. So don't bring too many metrics into the back play and shake the team. Let them do their job, give them environment, give them confidence, then let them inspect and adapt and then become high performance teams. Trust us, agile works, strong works. Anything else? Last but one question. I'm here, I'm looking here, we are here to Okay. Fantastic question. That is, the question is, if multiple teams are working, each team will have its own definition of done or common definition of done. That comes in scaling model. That means multiple teams, for example, take a case of Amazon. Amazon has the books and electronics and something. So multiple teams may be working on these things. There is a chief product owner concept if you are using less framework or save some different terminology. But teams may have individual definition of done, but it is always good to have a common definition of done because when you integrate the things, they should work according to your common definition of done. Okay? One, one last question. Very nice. Thank you for meeting you and uh, thanks to Mother for giving this opportunity. Thank you. Okay. So we will answer more questions as we go along. So shall we complete the uh, top most user story now? What will that be obviously? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say the complete story, so I should say the complete story. <laughs> and